Actually, I, I just remembered uh, someone sent me a link to watch. Someone sent me a link to watch. Uh, where was the link? Where was the link? Just give me a second. Found it. Found it. YouTube. Copy link. Let's see this one. Let's see what this guy says. Okay. Hey everyone. Project update. So I've used Apple stuff for probably 20 years. Apple stuff. And their stuff is really solid, really fast. But for me lately, the approach they're taking and their software is suffering from that new wonderfully accurate term that is in shitification. Apple and and shitification. That's quite fitting, I would say. That's quite fitting. I don't think I would uh, I would make a better word. I, I guess I'm not a native English speaker, but this word really feels at home <laughs> in this scenario. Okay. So what do we do? What do we well, do? I know. I already went through the process of switching from iOS to Android, and I'm okay. still alive. And people even still text me. So people even still text me, which places this person immediately in the United States of America, because in Europe we don't use iMessage. Nobody does that. Not even iPhone users. So we have we have now placed the person into a country. Good. So. Oh. It's possible. You don't have to use iMessage. Um, I know. So if I want to switch away desktops from Apple, there's not a lot of choices. We got Windows, but if you've used Windows, you know you don't want to use Windows. Um, okay. The the fail pop up. I guess it's still a thing on Windows. It, not in that form, but. Um, we do have crashes with Windows nowadays still, yeah, uh, especially with drivers and stuff like that. But um, he, he's not wrong. I have to use Windows for work. That's no fun. I want no part of it. And that... Uh, sorry for interrupting this guy so much, but he said he has to use Windows for work. And uh, in that regard, in that regard, I think... Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think there is room to 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 go around that, but I guess that depends on what type of company you work for, because some companies will give you the the ability to choose your operating system, especially if you are an IT guy, right? Uh, Zoran Mostalic, hello, hello. That leaves us pretty much just Linux that rabbit hole of nerdery that is Linux on the desktop. It's almost like telling your music friends that you're getting into modular synthesis, um, which I tried. So do we dare go into Linux on the desktop? We do. We do dare. I found an old desktop from Dell on eBay that I would feel okay messing around with. I bought that for 200 bucks, erased it, and installed Linux. And it was easy. It was easy. I picked the, hey, you're switching from Mac, just try this. Ubuntu. I tried it. It worked. It's really nice. It's really nice. Am I made? Good approach on going with the, uh, I know I muted myself, apologize. Good, good approach uh, on, on going with the old desktop to, to see, uh, to, to dip his fingers, right? And going with Ubuntu by default, also a good choice in my opinion, because people who uh, intentionally go with the uh, most difficult distribution out there just to feel their nerdiness uh, steam out of their ears, that 
does not always work out, right? So in my opinion, uh, thumbs up for going with a with an inst distribution which will give you a sense of how much Linux can just work, right? So if he will want and uh, sooner or later he will want to try all of the other nerdery that is out there. He, he will, he will switch to another distribution sooner or later and he will distro hop. I can guarantee that, that to you. But uh, going with Ubuntu for a, for a first one to get an idea of how things can just work, uh, that, that's a good approach uh, in, in my opinion. Insert Caffeine, I have to go, thank you. Uh, and you are all well, uh, awesome. I hope to catch you all soon and waves and wave back at you as well. And hello, Zoran, as well. Taking this on it? Yes, I am. Can I read email? Yeah. Can I make videos? Yeah. Can I listen to Spotify? Yeah. Can I spend too much time reading the news if I want to? Yes, absolutely. Um, surprisingly, it's been fun. Actually fun. I don't know if you remember this, but computers, exploration, learning, it can be fun. You don't have to just be shoveled ads and upgrade paths and be warned, oh, you're about to be out of storage. Um, and the more I use this, the more it makes me think that Apple stuff. Now, he, he mentioned storage. Uh, so I have a Mac friend who is uh, pretty much not interested into uh, going outside of the Apple ecosystem. And that's his own choice, of course. Uh, but he bought a MacBook Air, the base, base model that has 256 gigs. And he keeps telling me how uh, he has like 100 gigabytes of system hidden things. Like 100, like almost... 50% of his SSD uh, filled with something that he doesn't know what it is and he cannot reach these things because the Mac operating system does not think that the user should uh, worry about this. So at some point he told me that he did a system upgrade or something like that. I may, may, I may have wrongly remembered, but he definitely told me that uh, the, the size of this 100 gigabytes of shit has decreased significantly and he was happy because he had more free space. And a couple of days later he told me like it, it grew back again and once again he doesn't know uh, what happened and he now needs to buy a new Mac because this one just keeps filling up for on, on its own and he cannot upgrade the SSD because it's soldered to the motherboard, so he has to buy a new computer. And this is kind of interesting with, with the Mac, right? He, he will still continue buying into the Apple ecosystem because he loves it. I'm not even calling him out on that, but, you know, uh, while my friend has uh, this attitude, this guy here, what was his name here? This guy here, Bill Moriarty, he clearly is not happy with anchitification and kudos to him for for going into this adventure, right? So um, thumbs up for that man, thumbs up. Uh, Nobrox says, speaking of distro hopping, can I install one Linux kernel and then having four distros on the same disk? No, you cannot do that but you can install multiple Linux distributions on the same disk, uh, like a dual boot, right? Uh, put one distribution on one partition, uh, the second one on the second partition, and each one will have its own kernel. So you can dual boot multiple uh, Linux um, uh, distributions at the same time. Uh, boot this one, then reboot to the other one. Uh, you just have to give them uh, separate space on your hard drive. It is possible, uh, but you have to be careful about how you're um, approaching this because not every distribution is able to handle dual boot automatically and you will, uh, with some distribution, you will have to pay attention uh, with the process of, um, 
of um, uh, partitioning, right? So, for example, Open Mandriva will detect another Linux distribution already installed on your hard drive, and it will just give you an option install alongside the uh, existing existing distribution. Uh, Open Mandriva will do that automatically for you, and it will give you. Um, a future layout of what is going to do to your hard drive and it will show you in colors how how the uh, existing Linux distribution is going to be shrinked or, or, or shrunk uh, and how the Open Mandriva is going to be installed on a newly created free space. Uh, so from that perspective it's, uh, it's a pretty good second distribution no matter what the first one is. Um, same goes for the third one and the fourth one, right? Can you open up your Mac and add more RAM? No. When you're running out of space, can you open it up and put in a bigger hard drive? No, you cannot. Can you tell the OS you want to do whatever you want and install whatever you want? No, you cannot. Correct. You can do all that stuff with this Linux stuff. However, there's a huge learning curve. Mm, let's say you want to do something like, you know, install an app. There's not just one place you can run a curl command in the terminal. Or there's something called a flat pack. There's something called a snap. Or do you use the Debian version? So that's a big learning curve. I don't know all that stuff yet. So what he has probably learned by now is that curl command uh, being one of the uh, reason, uh, one of the ways to install applications, Flatpak and Snaps, uh, two others, of course. That that's absolutely correct, and the Debian uh, package is also correct. But there is also App Images. That's something that he has probably found out by now, uh, and um, also RPM um, packages and Pacman packages. You know every. Uh, every distribution that is not based on anything else is using their own package manager. So uh, I, I can see how this can be daunting for a new user. But once again, kudos uh, to this guy for actually wanting to dive into the wonderful, wonderful uh, world of nerdery uh, of Linux users, right? But I'm learning it, and I'm actually having fun learning it. I'm actually having fun learning it. It wasn't that hard to switch. I'd say the iOS to Android was harder. I paid for an app called 1Password. I exported all my passwords out of Safari, imported them into 1Password, and I'm set up. There's a large community of people online messing with the appearance, customizing how it looks. That's a lot of fun. And your computer starts to feel like yours again. You're not being pushed on upgrade paths. There's no ecosystem login. You're not being shoveled um, new OS upgrades that you have to install because they have a new feature that they... Well, uh, arguably the lack of ecosystem uh, is sometimes a negative of uh, in the Linux world, right? When, you know, when this desktop environment is not 100% compatible with that one and Wayland not being 100% compatible with X, org server, right? And when VLC doesn't want to start up in Valen mode on the uh, on Hyperland, right? So there is, uh, you know, he, he will get to that at some point. But yeah, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful world of freedom. It's a wonderful world of freedom uh, where you can choose your favorite distribution that comes with their Halo desktop environment and when the distribution maker is taking care of you that everything works for you properly out of the box uh, let's say open mandriva with uh, with their kde plasma or uh, ubuntu with their gnome or, or whatever right and um, you know like mint with cinnamon though those are all first class supported uh, desktop environments that will work out of the box really really well for most of the people right but when you start customizing things because you will start customizing at one point then you will have to uh, inflate your nerdery level to a lot higher degree in order to catch up with all of the intricacies of the how the Linux engine works from the inside, how the combustion works, how the cylinders behave. And I'm talking about systemd and, you know, uh, grub bootloader and the text console and the 
uh, the the graphical uh, user login managers and whatnot, right? So um, uh, SSH uh, and terminal with Tmax, Zoran says, yeah, correct, absolutely correct. Uh, let's let, let's let the guy finish uh, what he has to say. They have to add so they can sell more computers, you know. So I'm having a lot of fun. Maybe you'll have fun. Let me know if you're trying it. Let me know maybe you've already been doing this for 10 years and I'm just way behind. Either way, computers are fun. Computers are fun, guys. Computers are fun. Computers are fun. This is this is one of the most genuine um uh, this is one of the most genuine uh, statements that I have heard in a very long time. Computers are fun. Yes, they are. They absolutely are. You need to have a certain level of freedom in order to gain access to this fun, though. So, you know, why did he say computers are fun? Because he's not talking about proprietary operating system that have for their goal uh, shareholders uh, and money and uh, trying to close you up in their ecosystem, trying to squeeze every one last penny out of your pocket as much as they can. So from that perspective, yes, computers are fun. Uh, I think uh, that uh, Bill, Bill, yeah, Bill, I think Bill has uh, absolutely nailed it. Kudos to you, Bill, and welcome to Linux community. Welcome in. Uh, no Brock123 says this hits in the fields. Uh, so true. Well, e everyone who is on my stream, go go give a follow to the to the Bill. Go give a follow to the Bill. I have linked his video in the chat. Uh, give him a warm welcome to the Linux community, please. Give him a welcome. I think we need more. I think we need more uh, of the people who are ready to feel the fun in computers. I think this is awesome. Absolutely awesome.